Hey there, my name is Alex Toman, and I'm an instructor at Point Blank Music School Online. In this video, I'm going to show you how to produce arpeggiated synth parts like Kavinsky. Modeling his production is a great exercise for learning to compose, arrange, and produce in the synthwave genre. If you want to learn more skills like this, check out my program at pointblankmusicschool.com. First off, the choice of synthesizer is a crucial element of this style. The synthwave genre, and the outrun aesthetic as a whole, is based around technology of the 1980s. So we're going to want to choose a software synth that models those kinds of sounds. One of Logic's stock plugins is RetroSynth, a virtual instrument that is designed to model the classic hardware synth sounds of the 80s and 90s. There are different kinds of sounds you can use for an arpeggiated synth part. String-like sounds can make your production sound cinematic. Hard lead sounds can make it very intense. Percussive sounds can help increase the rhythmic drive. For our purposes, I want to choose something a bit softer, like a pad. So I'm going to click on this drop-down menu at the top, navigate to Synth Pads, and I'm going to choose the Dynamic Soft Pad. Here's what this sounds like. I really like this sound, but it does need a couple changes. When you're wanting to make a fast arpeggiated synth part, you need to take into account the attack and release of the synthesizer's envelope. A slow attack on a sound won't work with a fast arpeggiation because the sound won't even reach its peak point before we move on to the next note. We need a relatively fast attack for a fast arpeggiation. A long release on a sound won't work because it will cause the end of a note to overlap with the beginning of the next note. This can result in a chaotic, noisy synth part. To adjust these parameters, I'm going to lower the attack value in the amplitude envelope. And now I'm going to lower the release value, which is right here. Now we have a sound with a quicker attack and release. This is perfect for a fast, arpeggiated synth part. Now, I'm going to use the MIDI arpeggiator effect to create an arpeggiation for this synth sound. To add the arpeggiator, click on the MIDI effects slot right above the instrument slot on your channel strip and select arpeggiator. This is Logic's built-in MIDI arpeggiator. The first thing I want to do is set my rhythmic value for the arpeggiation. In other words, how fast do I want the arpeggiation to be? The arpeggiation speed is designated as a rhythmic value. 16th notes, 8th notes, quarter notes, and so on. Therefore, the speed of the arpeggiator will actually depend on my project tempo. 8th notes played at a session tempo of 200 beats per minute are much faster than 8th notes played at a tempo of 110 beats per minute. My tempo is set to 108 beats per minute. And this is a moderate tempo, so I'm going to stick with 16th notes for this project. Now, we could choose some of the basic patterns here to create an arpeggiation, such as playing notes from lowest to highest, or highest to lowest. But Kavinsky will often add a slight variation to a simple pattern to make it more interesting. So, instead of choosing one of these default note orders, I'm going to choose this option. This is the As Played note order setting, which will play back notes in the order that they were triggered. Next, I'm going to turn on Latch Mode using this button at the top. This will allow the arpeggio to run without me needing to hold down the keys. This will make the process just a little bit easier. Under the Latch Mode drop-down menu, I'm going to choose Add. This allows me to add notes one by one to the latched arpeggio. With all of these options set, I can now play one key at a time, and it will be added as the next note in my arpeggiated pattern. So what notes should I play? Well, synthwave is generally a simple style of music, harmonically speaking. It's often based on a simple chord progression in a minor key. This project is in the key of A natural minor. You'll see in the markers track that I've labeled my chord progression. 
So I'm just going to be playing an A minor chord followed by an E minor chord, and then it will repeat. So let me open the keyboard window here so you can get a better idea of the notes that I'm playing. Okay, so we're gonna jump into a little bit of music theory here, so bear with me. An A minor chord contains the notes A, C, and E. So that's all I'm going to use, but, but I'm going to spread them across about two octaves. I also want this pattern to span two beats. Since I've set my rhythmic value as 16th notes, I'm going to need an eight step pattern. So I need to play eight notes in succession to achieve my desired length. So I'm going to make my top note C. This is the third of the A minor chord. And now I'm going to add A, E, C, A, and E. That's a total of six notes so far. Instead of continuing down the keyboard, for these last two notes, I'm going to come back to the top and play C and A again. Remember how I said Kavinsky will often add a slight variation to a simple pattern? That's what we're doing here. It's nothing crazy, but it's enough to make this pattern a little bit more interesting than an entirely descending pattern, which we could have chosen in the note order preset options. So there's an arpeggiation on an A minor chord, but we haven't actually recorded it yet. I don't have any MIDI data over here in the workspace area on this track. Fortunately, the arpeggiator in Logic has a MIDI copy button, which is right here. If I click and drag from this button into the workspace, Logic will copy over the MIDI performance output from the arpeggiator. So now I have my MIDI arpeggiation on my track as a MIDI region. So now I'm going to disable the MIDI arpeggiator on this channel strip. If I keep it on, Logic is going to arpeggiate my arpeggiation, which I don't want. So let me zoom in a bit. Because this is just one two beat instance of my arpeggiation, I'm going to want to loop it. So I'll move my cursor to the top right of the region and click and drag to loop it a few times. In my markers, you'll see I've laid out the chords I want for this track. So I'm going to only loop it so it fits within the time designated for an A minor chord. So now at bar eight, I need to change chords to E minor. I could go through that whole process again to create an E minor arpeggiation, but I'm going to approach this one a bit differently. I'm just going to copy the A minor arpeggiation over by option, clicking, and dragging. And now I'm going to edit it in the piano roll editor. So if I double click this region, the piano roll editor will open. So an E minor chord contains the notes E, G, and B. So to change this from an A minor chord to an E minor chord, I need to change all of the C notes to B. And I need to change all of the A notes to G. With that done, I can now loop this E minor arpeggiation. Let's hear how that sounds together. Now that I have an A minor and an E minor arpeggiation set, I'm gonna rename these regions just so they're properly labeled. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to navigate to name and color and then click rename regions. So I'll call this one A minor I'll do the same thing with this one. Call this E minor. So now I can just copy these regions over to the A minor and E minor sections. A couple mixing considerations here. As it is, the arpeggiated synth part is a little dry. I want to give it a bit more space in the mix. So I'm going to send my arpeggiated synth part to a reverb and a stereo delay. This will help my synth feel a bit fuller and spacious in the stereo field. Now let's listen to it again. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's listen to all of that in context with the rest of my track. So, there you go. That's how you can create some arpeggiated synth parts for your synthwave tracks. Feel free to experiment with the different arpeggiation settings in the MIDI arpeggiator.